What's up everyone, welcome back to Just Finish Coding. In this new series, you will learn how to make Doodle Jump on Scratch 3. Obviously, it's not going to be the full-fledged version of the game, but it will be a functional simplification. The game mechanism will remain the same and you will have a thumbnail, a score, and of course, the sliding jumps. So, without further ado, let's get right into our code. So once you've set up your Scratch 3 editor, the first thing I'm going to do is to delete the cat sprite. And in case you do not know, all the art and the files that I'll be using will be linked in the description below as a Google Drive attachment. So you can go there and download all the necessary sprites. Once you've done so, you can head over to choose a backdrop and then click upload backdrop. You have to navigate through your files to the particular backdrop and um, you can just click on the one which says doodle. And uh, within choose a backdrop, um, not choose a backdrop really, within backdrops, um, within the costumes of the backdrop rather, I'm gonna click on upload backdrop once again. And this time I will be clicking on blue sky. So these two are the backdrops that you will need to be using and I think they look pretty decent. So the first backdrop is going to be the doodle jump and that's gonna be where our thumbnail is. So what I'm gonna do first is within upload a sprite, I'm gonna upload the play button uh, sprite if you wanna call that. So within sprites, you can click on play.svg and this, as you can see, is going to be a start game kind of trigger. So I'm going to start off the code with when green flag is clicked and here it's important to switch the background to the, uh, to the, uh, to the doodle background. So I'm going to say switch background to not blue sky, but doodle. All right, that is pretty much all you need here. And after this, I will be hiding a particular variable which have not set up yet. And this variable is going to be called score. And I'm gonna make it all caps so that uh, we can distinguish right here whether it's set uh, for all sprites or for the sprite only. And since, uh, since I'm gonna set it for all sprites, I'm gonna say um, score in all uppercase letters. Click okay. And here I'm gonna hide it for the time being. I'm gonna say hide variable score. And after this, we will need to go to this particular position. And I'm gonna make it a little more precise. I'm gonna say go to x0 the center of the screen and y is going to be negative 137 and uh, we will also show ourselves up here and uh, this is going to ensure that when the green flag is clicked you can see that boom we have a nice little a nice little play button there uh, i think it's in vector mode already uh, i tried converting it to bitmap but it kind of looked better on vector so i'm going to leave it right there setting up the click is very easy so you can head over to events grab a uh, when sprite is clicked or when this sprite is clicked um, in this case, what I will be doing is we will be switching the background to be blue sky. I will also be hiding at the beginning and um, I will be just uh, broadcasting a message right here. So within events, click on broadcast and um, I will say broadcast new message. I'll call it initialize or well, let me actually call it start game. No, let's go with initialize. I think that's better. So initialize and I think I spelled that wrong. So initialize. Okay, that's the right spelling. So there we go. And this is going to ensure that when we receive this message in the other sprites, we can start our code and that way we have a proper thumbnail. So when you click the green flag and then click on the play button, you can see that we move on to the main game. Before I code the doodle jump guy, I'm gonna be importing the platform. So within choose a sprite, click on upload sprite. And within your sprites folder, you'd wanna click on the one which says platform.svg. And you can see it's a pretty simple platform and just for simplicity's sake for now, I'll be switching back around to be blue sky and also hiding this guy right here. Okay, there we go. So this is going to be our platform and um, for the platform, what I'm going to do is start off with when green flag is clicked. Uh, but after the green flag is clicked, remember that it's time for our thumbnail. So we will have to hide it before we show. So when green flag is clicked, hide. And after that, when we receive initialize, then I can... Um, well show myself, but I will be making an entire function just for the inits that we will be doing. Uh, I'm gonna call that function begin and uh, make sure you set it to run without screen refresh as this will improve the speed of your code. Now I can click okay and uh, you obviously have to define begin, which I will do a little bit later, uh, but you can call begin right here, okay? So put in that begin block here and after this, you can grab a forever loop from the control section and you have to make a couple of more functions. So grab a forever loop and here's what you need to do. Within your forever loop, you need to make another block which says increment score. And um, yep, just click OK uh, after you type that in. And once you're done with this, uh, you can make another block after this. 
and I'm going to call this block as uh, let me call it create and uh, I'm going to add in an input first and this is going to be number of clones or just clones right here and just to make sure our text is uh, function is more distinguishable I'm going to add a label after that so it's going to be create um, uh, I'm actually not going to uh, name it this I'm going to say number and I'm going to put uh, put the clones right here so create dash clones if you want to think about it that way so now you can click OK and that is pretty great. So this is going to be our define that function and you can call this function first or uh, this create clones function before uh, the forever loop and within the forever loop you need to call in the increment score function. I'm going to start off coding the begin function. So when we do receive begin, the first thing I'll be doing is setting the score to be zero because well at the starting of the game the score needs to be zero. After this I will be showing the platform but uh, showing let, let's actually keep showing to the end because anyhow this code is going to um, sh uh, uh, update the screen only collectively so it really doesn't matter when we show it. So after you add in that I want you to uh, go to the motion category and grab this block which says set rotation style to be left to right and the reason I'm doing this is if you have it set to all around then what's going to happen is that your platform is going to start swiveling while it moves uh, and that's going to be really really weird. Uh, weird. So make sure you set this to be for left uh, set rotation style left to right and after that we need to make a new variable and I'm going to call this variable y pause and make sure you set it for this sprite only. Uh, this is going to be unique for each platform clone that we will be creating so it's important to set it for this sprite only and like I said I'm going to name all the variables for this sprite only or private variables or um, whatever you want to call them and I'm going to make them lowercase. So now you can click OK. And uh, here you want to set y pause to be negative 100. Okay, that's going to be our y position. And um, within this, uh, not within, right uh, before you have the show, I'm going to say go to x. That is going to be, let's code in our y pause first, y position first. So y is going to be y position and x is going to be 0. And that is pretty much all you need. So when we click the green flag and then the start game, you can see that we have our platform set up right at the beginning and while that's certainly not the end of our code, that is a good start. So now I'm going to code in this create clones uh, function. So within define clones, uh, define number of clones, here's what you need to do. So you can grab a repeat from the control section, the repeat number of times and you can put this number variable or parameter right inside that repeat. So uh, we repeat this many times and we will be creating a new clone. So create clone of myself, but before we do that, I will be changing the Y position by negative, not negative, by 35. And the reason I'm doing this is so that each clone has a unique Y position and we have them kind of set up like a ladder where each clone is set up on top of another. And well, this is pretty much all you need within this create number of clones function. You can head over to this block here and uh, type in either seven or six for the number of clones. Both of them work pretty well. I'm going to go ahead with 7 but if you think 6 would work better for you um, then feel free to code that in. Alright now it's finally time to code in our increment score function so you can take this down to the uh, bottom right here and this is going to be probably the simplest of all functions. Since uh, Doodle Jump is a scrolling game as in the platforms keep moving while the player almost remains stationary or uh, does not always remain stationary in our game he kind of moves at some point but most of the time he's going to remain within this screen. So the platform is going to be the one which goes below and below and below. So when the platform goes um, down a certain extent, then what we can do is make sure that our score increments. So what I will be doing is having an if then condition. So if a uh, y position and remember that y position is um, unique to each um, to each clone since it's like y pause, it's a private variable. So if the y position is less than negative 140. So if it has gone two down, then what we will do is change score by, change score by, and here I will be just for making the game a little bit more fun, uh, within operators I will grab a pick random from 1 to 10, and instead of 1 to 10 I'll say change it by pick random 20 to 30. So we kind of have, um, you know, an idea but not an exact idea what the score is going to actually be. And uh, after this, just for good measure, I'll add in a small time lag so that our score doesn't, you know, proceed too fast. Uh, this is optional, but I just found that it works much better. And I'm going to end this video right here. 
Of course, right now you don't have really a much of a tangible output. There are just, you know, clones sitting on top of each other. But in the next video, I'll be teaching you guys how you can improve this game and also move your player. And we'll also get into a little bit of the scrolling behind this. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.